As a world towning family, having pets on the road can be a challenge. When we started our travel life in Costa Rica, we had with us our dog from our life in Boston, Peanut. But unfortunately, old age got to her and she could not continue on with us as we explored the world. About two years later, we added a little bit of sunshine to our lives. He's a hamster. But unfortunately, hamsters don't have a long lifespan and he too passed on. We have always loved animals and have tried our best to keep this love flourishing. Today we visit a place where Alaskan Huskies rule the roost. We are going to a dog sledding training facility. Today's adventure is taking us to a dog sledding community facility experience. experience. Extravaganza. So we are going to be able to play with the new puppies and learn all about the dog sledding industry up here. What are you most excited about for our dog sledding tour? The puppies, easily. Away from the puppies! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Excited, Largo? I can't wait to see those puppies! It's gonna be a lot of fun. Seriously, this better not be a tour of any kind. I need the entire two hours for the puppies. Well, right now we're late, and so the puppies, you can hear them like screaming and whining. Oh like, Alon, come pet us! Largo, we're missing you! Oh my gosh, listen to them. Oh, so cute. I bet if you lived here, you wouldn't get much sleep. <laughs> Hey, I'm Daniel. Hi, Avalon. Uh, Avalon, hi. How many dogs do you have here? 106 dogs, including all the, the small puppies who can't run yet. I can't wait to get my hands on the babies. Oh my gosh, listen to them. You know you can change to being a cat person at this point, you know that, right? Oh, I'm not a cat person. I'm a dog person through and through. Look how excited they are. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. You guys are fun little doggies, huh? Yeah. Oh, this, this, this. let's get a little kisses. Here we go. Oh, I know. No way there's a room for you two. I know. So how much does it cost to buy one of these dogs? So when you want a very good trained dog, like here in the racing team, with a good age, with three, four years old, you pay a few thousand dollars. It's like this, so <laughs> all night. Oh my gosh, it's so friendly. And you are lead dogs. Yeah. Our first order of the day was to get to know these amazing animals. We're going to find out why these dogs are so unbelievably friendly. Uh, like I already mentioned, nine weeks old, around nine weeks. We can go inside there, but you see, they will jump on you. Okay. They will jump when they... Oh my god, you're so cute! Oh my gosh, they're also, 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 Jan mentioned it already. This is the first step of being a good sled dog. They, they deal with people every day? Almost, yeah. yeah. Almost. So at least we are in here, but um, we, we, have, we have a lot of customers and we bring them in here. And they learn children are no problem, adults are no problem. And this is how you get a friendly dog when he's older and makes no problems on the sled later. No, that's my camera strap. <laughs> so we're at the point now where we're gonna get into like the real puppy land, the small little guys, and they're so they're cute. They're not so small. They're five weeks oh. old, right? Five weeks. Yep. Five weeks. Oh my gosh. Hi. <laughs> Hello for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Hi. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> no. Very very active at the moment. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're adorable. Is that the perfect age for you? <laughs> yep. Where are you going? There's no place to go. This is the best place right now, I'm telling you. When we were younger, we used to sit on the grass. Among the flowers, we just let the days pass by. People would tell us, to get a grip of ourselves and get a job We didn't care what we were told Cause when we were younger We used to sit on the grass and go down So once once the, the puppies are already grown and they're in their own cages do they Does the mother still act like a mother? No. No? No, that stops totally. That's it? Yeah, that's, that's all I'm gonna be. 
Like I said, we, we leave often, the house, uh, don't bother coming we still back. have mother and daughter living together, but there are still competition sometimes ab about food or we have here a male. Yeah. Um, he he's the father and they had a big fight for a few weeks ago, so that really yeah, stops. Living so, with the son. Yeah, so <laughs> father and son together and no, that's so really, the, that stops when they are grown up, everybody for his own. And So the son's still playing off, off the dad's Netflix account? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what's going on here today is not just sort of learning about dogs and petting dogs and sort of figuring out that these Alaskan Huskies, which is what they are, are just probably the most friendly dogs you ever want to meet. But we're going to go on a dog ride. This little cart right here, this little cart right here is going to be... Can you hear that? It's so loud. That cart is going to be where the kids are going to go ahead and learn what it's like to be on a dog sled ride. Clearly it's August now, so there's no way that we can actually go on a snow ride. But they're doing the training at this point, and we're going to learn what it's like to be dragged around with, with dogs. It's, it's dog sledding in August in Sweden. So cool. <laughs> oh my god. This is the most interesting part of the day. To prepare for the training runs, the dogs are let out two by two, and they just know that they're going to get out as fast as possible so they can get to run. For these Alaskan Huskies, this is their chance to shine for all to see. So I know this is the breast part, so it's the The dogs know that exactly what is happening. And they love to go. Yeah, that's what they are made for. And we put it down and then they already know, look. I have to do nothing. Good, good, good dogs know what to do, Zack really touch them that they are used to it. Yeah, oh, like this? Make it you, can, you can you can get, get some kiss kisses, here, yeah. This, <laughs> this happens, yeah. Nope, this is good. Now you have to get the left yeah. leg in here. So you have to lift it. Mate, that was very good from here. Now you, you gotta take lift the leg. leg. Take the leg. Yeah, like that. Yeah, and she knows what to do normally. <laughs> yeah, just take it, don't be afraid, just take the leg and she has she has to do that. <laughs> So Avalon, do you think this is a profession you want to do as a as a career? Maybe. <laughs> she likes dogs. You're definitely gonna get positive reinforcement from this. Stop. Hi, hi. How do you determine who's the lead dog? This is a kind of training at the beginning. So you really you choose some dogs and they get a, like a little bit of special trainings. Of course, they have to understand the command. So you choose to. to also, do you you learn to yeah? You teach them the commands, and later on the sled, you most of the time. So here in our kennel, we have already some lead dogs. Okay. And when you have a lead dog, you put the ones the lead dogs of the next generation in the second row. Oh, so they can learn from them. Exactly. Is the there dogs any like, are learning indicator? From the other ones. Like, is there an indicator mm, of what's going to make a good lead dog? Mm, like they come out as a puppy and that, they're that walking. You, early. you will see that in the training. So when a dog is, when I say very stupid and he really don't want to learn the commands, you say, okay, that's it. He's not a lead dog. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> normally it's really a matter of training and when you train them well, every dog can be a lead dog. So we have a special racing team, a professional racing team, and my boss, he prefers females. Mm -hmm. So there are more racing dogs here, females than males. So it's really only a matter of training. And uh, if they are a, a dog that does, you know, is on the sleds, are they able to reproduce as well or are those separate dogs no that's so uh, when we get five times puppies four times is accidents okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. they're all alaskan husky alaskan husky so maybe you know pictures of siberian husky they are the one with the blue eyes like fuji and they look like a wolf yeah um, and this is a mixed breed uh, so I you take the siberian husky this is the basic and cross the siberian husky with everything what is fast and eager to work. Okay. So greyhounds, pointers, oh, okay. some various hunting dogs, dogs, yeah, even collies. So this why of course sisters look pretty the same. Yeah. But when you when we later we'll have a look around you see there are some dogs look more like hunting dogs, some dogs are looking more like Siberian huskies. Okay. You never know which genetic comes out the most. These dogs were primed and ready to go. You can tell this is what they are born to do. There were only six dogs attached to the vehicle, but when they released the blocks, it felt like there were a hundred.
They sprinted from the beginning. The wind rushed through our hair and we could definitely feel the G-forces as we took turns. It was amazing. <laughs> Marco! Marco! What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you see, in the motor business, there's horse power, and then there's dog power. It's amazing. <laughs> What do they like about this? Because I can't imagine having a harness tied to me and running. Like, that doesn't it's, sound like this fun. This is what they're made for. It's, it's like you have a border collie and he sees sheep. Yeah. He wants to bring them together and hurt them. And they are made for running. That's just what they're bred for. So it's this like is... my kids with chocolate. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. They are trained from this in the beginning and this is their pleasure. And they can do that all day. Is that harmful to them at all? <laughs> no. It's like I said, this motivation, they run 40 kilometers in the winter time and they still behave like this and working and give me more and wow. the, the younger dogs with two, three years, four years, we will not see tires. So how many dog sled teams are there in this part of Sweden? I think there's more dogs than people. <laughs> if you don't count the actual city of Kiruna, there's more dogs than people in the area, I'd say. So how do you feel to go around the circle? Awesome. Yeah? It's did, really, really fun. Did you drive? No, of course I didn't drive, Dad. Was it like going out in Santa's sleigh with the reindeer? Well, I don't know. I haven't been on Santa's sleigh yet. Hey. Hi, guys. There's eight. There's eight of them? Oh, my God. This is really good. So this right here is... We're going to talk quiet because all the dogs are sleeping Shh. over there. <laughs> but walking around here, you realize that these dogs are treated, well, it sounds like they're treated better than people. They are treated so well. They're fed well, they're giving rest time, they like, they naturally want to be out and moving and exercising and they embrace that with them. I, they clean the poop out once a day. I didn't see any, like maybe one or two poops in a cage, but it's the middle of the day at this point. They, the, gr the great part is that these dogs already know this land so well that they can just unleash the cages and they'll just run around here they won't run away so yeah, it's amazing they'll like these dogs know like when, when we showed up and they unleashed the ones that were going to go on to the actual uh, sled run with us is that they went straight to the to the chains because they were so excited to go for a run i think it's a good life yeah i was really i did some research online because we don't want to go or do anything that's going to harm animals and everything i read said these dogs are built for this they enjoy it they're not harmed i can tell you from visiting this place i can't speak for all of them but this place here takes very good care of their dogs and i'm super impressed by that it makes me want to come back and do like a five or six day expedition they'll take you out into the woods for like five days five i know days it's, it's so awesome but how do they how do the dogs stay warm during the winter when it's minus 35. They have bigger, bigger fur. We put straw in the houses in the night. The, the houses also have isolation in between. Um, the dogs can choose if they sleep together in one house or everybody separate and on the left side, on the right side. So they can cuddle and keep each other warm when they want. Quite a few are doing that. And they're running every day. It's very cold. They need a lot of energy. That means every dog around here needs around um, Six, seven thousand calories every day. And so, are they, are they over or not overweight? But are they fatter than normal in the yeah, summer? Because they're yeah, not, definitely. so they're a lot skinnier De than this. De definitely. And they eat a ton. Definitely. Wow. Definitely. So no, this, this dogs will lose some weight. So this, this goes with your theory, well, that running is really good for us. Look how fit these dogs are. I know. We can it's, go all day if we, we run every day. We can run all day. When we, have, when I have four people on the sled, um, I use twelve dogs here. Because we are going long distances, that means our shortest tour that we have is um, 16 kilometers. And the next longer one is 21 kilometers. And many of our dogs run both every day. That means 37, 38 kilometers every day. How long does 16 kilometers on this take? Around one hour. One hour. So that's the average speed, 15, 16 kmh. So that means we drive half an hour, then we make half an hour coffee break, we call it coffee tour, and then we drive half an hour back. Wow, that's and pretty fast. Yeah, we want it like this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want it like that, it's for the train. When you came over, my heart 
Let it sit a bit, that the coffee will go down a little bit. Just cut out anything that, that had any kind of yeah. anything in it. So. Yeah, so we're now being taken um, on a what's called a fika. Now a fika could mean a fika house, which is like this type of shack where people come in to get warm, or it could be like a whole little just ceremonial having a snack Something item. Something like in a coffee. So over a hot warm fire right over here with water boiling over the kettle, in the kettle, uh, this is super exciting. I'm ready for coffee. I have only had one today. That's not enough. <laughs> of course we have cinnamon buns. Okay. Like the good tradition in Sweden. Yum. Oh, do you want one of those? Did you want one of those? Thank you. Would you like a cinnamon bun, Avalon? Yes, please, Mom. So, you, you were in... And, and a Capri Sun. You were in... Yeah, I haven't Canada. had these in like and millions of years. Yeah. Millions of years. Wonderful. Nice. Makes me want to come back now, though, and do the like time. and do uh, an expedition with the kids. This like is, this, this is this is really cool. This but different. The whole scenery looks different. This it's in the winter time. We have good clothes here for the people. Yeah. Normally you don't freeze that much. When people are freezing, we can go directly to our huts. When people have fun, we make more. Yeah. We also had tourists who booked a tour, and they said we make a two two day expedition but we want to drive at least 110 kilometers in two days no problem for us and we know that really no problem at all all right so here is our mess right here we are done with our sleigh ride adventure what, what do you guys, guys think? think i love it i want to work here really it was so much fun i loved all the dogs and they're so friendly they are so friendly. you realize they said it gets a negative 35 degrees celsius i can deal with that that's that's not just cold that's unbelievably cold i know largo how about you? Uh, I don't think I could deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> but I would stay here for the dogs. The puppies. Oh my god. Did you see the second so one? They were so cute. Did you see the second puppies? Those were so cute. They looked like baby bears. All right, so you guys ready to go? Yep. OK. I've never been a massive dog person, to tell you the truth. No, me neither. We're not super dog people. We had a dog. But, we had a dog. We loved our it, dog. We, yeah, we loved our dog because it's our dog. But it wasn't necessarily that we like. We crave puppies. Yeah. But, but looking at these puppies, oh my gosh, they are they're wonderful. Now these these Alaskan Huskies, which I really did like. I like them too. They are the most people-friendly dogs I've seen in forever. Every single dog. You would think that they're out there, they're pulling the sleigh, that they're just like focused on their job. They were so friendly and and gentle. They lapped us, They they a couple did a little like light nibble. It was so cute. And every time we walked by one, they came, poked their head out and they wanted to be, you know, really adorable. I, I, I think that there's a question of the vlog coming here. What's the question And the question of the vlog is, would you have a hyperactive dog like this, even though it's so cute and so friendly? I don't know. I, don't I think I think it would require such a commitment that it would be very difficult to actually maintain it on a full-time basis. And I think, just from seeing them, my personal opinion is that they're really meant for this. So if you can't get out and run them like this and let them be free, I don't know if I... I wouldn't want this type of dog. I know. This is, I don't think this is... Our RV is the place for them. But this is our last adventure in Sweden, so... It is. It is. It is. Next stop is going to be Finland. So, Bye, that, Sweden. we're done. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good time. So, so being that they're not really meant for domestication, are they are they good for an RV? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then you I go mean, for you a walk every day, 20 kilometers, uh, yeah, I would say so. No, so you just let them run behind you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or they can pull the RV. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, enough. Can you can pull enough yeah. of them. I'll tickle, tickle, tickle.